Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge O Level Mathematics Syllabus D, Paper 1, which is the non calc paper, which is specimen paper for examination from 2025. In this video, I'll be doing the questions 14 to 24 of this paper, and there's part 2 of a two part series. Let's start. Question 14 A, B, C, and D are points on the circumference of a circle. EF is a tangent to the circle at C. Angle BAD is equal to 68 degrees. And angle BCE is 50. Find angle CBD. Give a geometrical property to explain each step of your working. Alright, since we have a tangent line and we have an angle between the tangent line and a chord, therefore we can use alternate segment theorem to find this angle here. Angle BDC equals 50 degrees due to alternate segment theorem. I'm writing this down because you're supposed to give a geometric property for each step. So you can write that angle over here. Next, we know that angle BCD is equal to 180 minus 68, and that is 112 degrees. Why is this true? That's because we can see that there's 68 here, and this is cyclic quadrilateral. Opposite angles on cyclic quadrilateral add to 180, so this is 112. And therefore, we can write this down, opposite angles in a quadrilateral, actually cyclic quadrilateral, which means all four corners are on the circumference of the circle. So cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. Now, since we have these two angles, we can find a third angle using the triangle sum property. So angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So angle CBD is equal to 180 minus 112 minus 50, which is 18 degrees. That's the answer. Question 15, write 25 to the power minus 3 by 2 as a fraction simple as 4. So we have a minus power, we can just do 1 by the power which is remaining. So 25 to the power 3 by 2. That's simply 1 by 125. Since 25 to the power 3 by 2 is going to be square root of 25, hold the power of 3. That's 5 cubed, which is 125. So 1 by 125 is our answer. Question 16. A few sets are given here. The universal set is numbers from 1 to 12. A is the set where x is between 6 and 10 inclusive. B is the set where x is a factor of 8. C is the set where x is a square number. Sorry, factor of 18, not factor of 8. A, complete the Venn diagram. Let's start with 1. 1 is a square number and is a factor of 18, but it's not between 6 and 10. Therefore, we put this in the intersection between B and C. Next, for 2, we have a factor of 18 and nothing else, so it's just b. Same for 3. Now, for 4, it's a square number, but it's not a factor of 18, and it's not between 6 and 10, so we put it here. And using this method, we can identify where all the numbers are going to be. So we have 5 here. Now, since 6 is inside this range, 6 goes inside a, and it goes inside b because it's a factor of 18 and then we have 7 which is only a 8 which is only a 9 which is all 3 actually 10 which is only a 11 which is none and 12 which is also none this will be our final answer b find n of a intersection c intersection p prime so we know that a intersection c is this region over here the intersection between A and C. And this intersection of B prime means also everything outside B. So we have this region and we cut off this one. So it's only here. But the thing is, there's nothing in here. So this number of elements inside the Venn diagram at this point is just zero in this region. Sorry, that'll be our answer. Question 17, the time some students take to travel to school one morning are shown the table. Time recorded in minutes. A on the grid, complete the histogram to represent this information. So you can find the frequency density. 
and this is simply frequency divided by class width for each one now we already have the first bar drawn in the graph which is 5 less than t less than equal to 10 and now you can draw from second bar onwards since you don't know the value of x so you can start from second one now frequency density is 16 by 10 1.6 29 by 5 5.8 20 by 5 4 15 by 30 0 0.5 now that'll be the height of the bars and now we just draw it correctly so 1.6 there's the same frequency density once again as the previous one therefore we draw it like this now it goes all the way up to 5.8 for 20 to 25 and therefore we draw it like this next it comes down a bit to 4 and it goes like this now 30 to 60 is just 0 0.5 it goes down a lot like this that's our enter b jamila says the histogram shows that there's the same number of students in the 5 less than t less than equal to 10 group as in the 10 less than t less than equal to 20 group explain why she is wrong well we know that frequency density is equal to frequency divided by class width and of here frequency density is the same for two groups just mentioned well why is she wrong that they're the same number of students yeah that's because this is not the frequency this is the density of frequency therefore we can say that the frequency is not the same because the class width is not the same so the frequency is not the same since class width for each bar are not the same. Actually, a better wording here would be to write each group. That's the answer. Question 18. The diagram shows a sketch of the graph y equals 3 times 2 to the x plus 5. A. The graph crosses the y-axis at point A. Find the coordinates. Well, the coordinates of this point is obviously going to be where x equals 0. So that will be equal to, so we can just write x equals 0 because it's the y-intercept. And that means y is equal to 3 times 3 to the 0 plus 5. That's simply 8. So the point coordinates are 0, 8. B. Write down the equation of the asymptote to the graph of y equals 3 times 2 to the power x plus 5. So we know that 2 to the power of x can never be equal to 0 at any time since log base 2 of 0 does not exist. Actually log base anything n of 0 does not exist. It's not in the real numbers. Therefore, we can say that the asymptote is going to be where 2 to the power of x equals 0 is the asymptote right there. And that means 3 times 0 plus 5, which is equal to 5. And of course, there's going to be y equals 5. Since y equals 3 times 0 plus 5, we get this. That's the answer. Question 19. f of x equals 5x plus 2. g of x equals x squared minus 5. h of x equals 7 minus x. a. Find f of 3. That's going to be simply substituting x equals 3. 5 times 3 plus 2, which is 17. B. Find gf of x. Give your answer in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So gf of x is going to be g of 5x plus 2. That means we get 5x plus 2 the whole squared minus 5. Since we substitute x equals 5x plus 2 in there. And expanding this, we get 25x squared plus 4 plus 20x using the formula that a plus b the whole squared is equal to a squared plus b squared plus 2ab and if you substitute the values of a and b over here you'll get these values and of course you have to subtract the 5 off at the end so that's 25x squared plus 20x minus 1 and this is the final answer part c so 3 by hf of x equals minus 1. That means hf of x is equal to 3 by minus 1, which is simply minus 3. And hf of x can be h of 5x plus 2. That means 
that's equal to minus 3 and 7 minus 5x plus 2 in brackets equals minus 3. Now 5x plus 2 is equal to 7 plus 3. If you bring 5x plus 2 here, minus 3 here, and we get 5x plus 2 equals 10, 5x equals 8, x equals 8 by 5, 1.6. That's the answer. Let's go to question 20. OACB is a parallelogram. OA equals 2F, OB equals 2G. X is a point on AB such that AX is to XB equals 3 is to 1. Find as simply as possible in terms of F and G, A, AB. So finding AB is simply AO plus OB, or in other words, OB minus OA. And that's simply 2G minus 2F. That's the answer. B, X, C. So we know that X is on AB such that AX is to XB equals 3 is to 1, which means if we just draw AB and then we can mark X around here since AX is to XB, 3 is to 1. We need around there, so this is just an estimate. And now we can calculate the exact vector. So now we can find the value of XB and then we know that BC equals OA due to parallelogram so this is 2F as well and now we can find XB plus BC equals XC so to find XB now we know that AB can be split using the X point as 3 is to 1 that means the total number of parts is going to be 4 and XB occupies one part so that's 1 by 4 so XB is going to be 1 by 4 times AB, which is 1 by 4 times 2G minus 2F, which is half G minus half F. Now XC is going to be XB plus BC. That's simply half G minus half f plus 2f which is half g or g by 2 we can write plus 3f by 2 that's the answer question 21 write as a single fraction in simplest form 4 by 3x minus 1 minus 5 by x plus 2 so you can write this as 4 times x plus 2 minus 5 times 3x minus 1 and divide by the multiplication of the two denominators. This is using cross multiplication and then we multiply the denominators. So that's simply going to be 4x plus 8 minus 15x plus 5 by 3x minus 1 times x plus 2. And we can write this as 13 minus 11x by the denominator we already have. We cannot simplify this further, so this is our answer. 13 minus 11x by 3x minus 1 times, sorry, times x plus 2. And yeah, here is 3x, not just 3. So that's going to be our answer. Now going to question 22. The diagram shows a circle of radius 3 centimeters. The minor sector has angle 100 degrees. To calculate the area of the major sector, give an answer in terms of pi. So the radius is 3, the minor sector is 100 degrees. So the angle of the major sector is going to be 360 minus 100, 260 degrees. So the area of the major sector is going to be theta by 360 times pi r squared. And that's simply going to be 260 by 360 times pi times 3 squared and we can do this by cancelling out the zeros and we can cancel this to be 13 and 18 and now 3 squared is 9 so we can cancel it this to 2 and get rid of this so 13 by 2 pi or 6.5 pi centimeters squared and in this case we're supposed to leave our answer in terms of pi since we're not allowed to use a calculator so that's our answer Question 23, A. Write x squared minus 6x minus 19 in the form of x minus a the whole squared plus b. So what is a over here? 
we should take the coefficient of x and then divide it by 2. So in this case, it's minus 8. That's equal to minus 6 by 2, which is minus 3. So a equals 3. Why do we take minus a here? Since usually it's given as x plus a, the whole squared plus b. But in this case, it's given as x minus a, the whole squared. Therefore, we have to take minus a instead of plus a because this can be written like this. Minus a can be written separately as well. So a equals 3. Either way, we're getting x minus 3, the whole squared, plus b. And in this case, we can say x minus 3, the whole squared, plus b, is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 19. And x minus 3, the whole squared, can be written as x squared, x squared plus 9 minus 6x. And now that means we cancel out both x squares, cancel out both 6x. So 9 plus b equals minus 19. b equals minus 19 minus 9, which is minus 28. And therefore, we can write x squared minus 6x minus 19 is x minus 3, the whole squared, plus minus 28. Why are we writing plus minus 28? Because b has to be written in the form of plus b. And in this case, we're writing plus a negative number. If we write minus 28, where's the plus symbol which you need? And in this case, a is equal to 3. It's a positive number already, so we can just write x minus 3, the whole squared. B, using the answer to part A, write on the coordinates of the turning point of the graph of y equals x squared minus 6x minus 19. The turning point is actually going to be in an equation of form x minus a, the whole squared plus b. The turning point is a comma b. That's why we write in x minus a instead of x plus a. So in this case, the turning point is 3 comma minus 28. That's our answer. Let's go to question 24. A. Simplify root 75 plus root 27. So we can write this as root of 3 times 25 plus root of 3 times 9. Why are we writing this? Because 9 and 25 are square numbers. So we can write root of 3 times 5 squared plus root of 3 times 3 squared. And that's simply 5 root 3 plus 3 root 3 because we can take out these numbers by removing the square symbols as we're multiplying on both. So 5 root 3 plus 3 root 3 is simply 8 root 3. B. Rationalize the denominator. Give your answer in simplest form. So rationalizing the denominator means that we have to multiply the fraction by its conjugate. So multiply it by 2 minus root 5 by 2 minus root 5. This still gives the same answer since there is 1, but then we are multiplying by the conjugate to make the denominator a rational number. So we can write this as 3 by 2 plus root 5 times 2 minus root 5, and then in the denominator as well, we can times 2 minus root 5. We know that a plus b times a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. This is how we are rationalizing it. So we get 3 times 2 minus root 5, by a squared minus b squared, which is 4 minus 5. And we can write this as minus 1. So we simply write minus 3 times 2 minus root 5. That's 3 root 5 minus 6. That's our final answer. And with that, I come to the end of the paper. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Sanjay Rasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.